we're going to read from the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel according to Luke. We're going to read from chapter 10 and verse 23. New Testament, the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 10 and verse 20, and verse 14. Get 23, rather. Luke chapter 10 and verse 23. Then turning to the disciple, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desire to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among the robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to the, an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. I mean, a scribe, a lawyer, rather, found himself uh, listening with attention to the word of the Lord, and especially when he said that, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, and they were driven by the Spirit to want and desire to see what you see, and did not see it, and hear what you hear, and did not hear it. And the lawyer, with boasting, As he is certain in his own opinions, and he's a lawyer indeed, he uh, is taught well when it comes to the word of the Lord. All his life he's taught teaching, and he's taught about the Lord, word of the Lord. And now a young fellow, about 30 years of age, came along to say to him that what you see 
these prophets, the prophets you heard about, wanted to see and did not see. And the kings wanted to hear and did not hear. And what you hear as well today is something that many prophets and kings wanted to hear and then did not. And he lost control. Who is that person and what is he saying? Who he thinks he is and many other things as Saul did for David. Who is that person, that young man, who is trying, what is he trying to do? People used to say that Saul uh, killed his hundreds and David his thousands. That was the feeling that came up to the heart of the lawyer against this uh, Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is not replying like Saul to David. But rather he is replying as the Son of God by doing the work of his Father. He wants to train the lawyer. He wants to teach him the word of the Lord. Because he thinks he knows, but he doesn't. He d has not understood yet that who the person he is trying to tempt is. And he's drawing near and he's telling, asking rather, the Lord. But our Lord Christ has that characteristic, that mindset. He is a servant. He is humble. And what he's interested in is to act accordingly to the word of the Lord. To train and reply to the the person that is attacking him, who is now directed by the enemy. He is speaking to the Lord and attacking the Lord. And remember, when the scribes and the Pharisees and the scribes took a woman ready to stone her and they brought her to Christ, and they told her that she was arrested uh, adult, as an adulterous woman. What do you say? And they would try to test the Lord. And our Lord is loving all peoples. Because he has the spirit in him without measure. And the love of God is poured out into his heart. Richly. In him by the Spirit. He is loving the scribe. He is loving the Pharisees. He is loving the lawyers and the Pharisees and the scribes, but also loves the woman. He loves all peoples and he loves you as well. He loves all peoples. What does he want? He wants to teach us, to train us. What else? To direct us. How? by his word and through his word through the word that we are reading today he is and this is the miracle when we listen to the word of the lord we're not listening to a voice or just a story but the spirit is bringing us to a point as being present to that point to that to what we read and many times we do not understand it but when we read the word of the Lord, especially when we listen to the word of the Lord, because faith comes through listening and listening of the word of the Lord, then God is doing and performing that great miracle. He's bringing us, being as if we were present and experiencing what we read. And what do we see? We see a lawyer full uh, of... Uh, distress, full of hate, full of boasting, to draw near to Christ and say, You that know all things, tell us what do you know. You are not someone who has studied, you're not a lawyer, what do you know? Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? In Christ is replying humbly. 
he wants to train him he wants to direct him he wants to save him that's the mindset of Christ he's not replying as they are asking him but he's replying as God want him to reply please Lord make us that way do you understand my dear brethren how important it is for you to be the child of God be faithful humble a servant and he comes near to test him he comes to humiliate him he comes to do harm to ridicule him but Christ is loving him and much why because he has the spirit without measure he's not only loving the lawyer but all peoples and to all people wants to bring to repentance so that we may inherit eternal life and with a very humble way Christ is replying saying what is written in the law he knows that he knows about the law because he's a lawyer how do you read it are you actually understanding what you read as if he said and the lawyer with a certainty that he knows the law and he did and indeed he does he said what I'm reading is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself and he says this with the uh, he wants to test and uh, uh, ridicule him by that reply and again the Lord replies humbly you have answered correctly do this and you will live you know what you need to do but he has prepared a trap and wanted to justify himself amongst all people because no one knew it wasn't just that between two of them there were many people listening to that conversation he said to Jesus uh, desiring to justify himself and who is my neighbor because there was no answer in the Old Testament in that that verse is it my relatives my tribe the people of Israel my household where who is my neighbor no one was able to reply to that question in the Old Testament it wasn't written in the word of the Lord who the neighbor was in the New Testament is revealed not who is the neighbor but who becomes your neighbor In other words, who is going to draw near and make that person love him? The person that God is bringing in, for, in front of you. The person that God is bringing in front of you, God wants him, you to become his neighbor. Make him love you. S imagine that uh, almost dead, half dead, person how much he loved the Samaritan that saved him even though he was a heretic to him that is the neighbor we are talking about know who is the neighbor but who the question is are you gonna become his neighbor and make him love you that lawyer does not know this uh, parable and he thinks that no one knows it because he doesn't and this is us when we do not know any something we think that no one knows or when we know something we think that only we know it how false are both of them these understandings the right thing to do is to speak to God and say Lord I do not know help me do not say that you know even though that you think you may know because the truth is that you do not know and the truth is that what you do not know is double what you know who is my neighbor therefore and Jesus replied again and said this great parable of the of the good Samaritan said a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and Jericho was the city of sin Jerusalem was the city of God and fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed leaving him half dead 
but God loves him. And what is God doing now? He is bringing the best, a priest, a servant of the Lord, so that he may save that person. But that priest, as he was going down that road, he saw him. Who knows what he thought? Maybe he thought that I have a business to attend, and many times we think, I have something to do, I'm not, I cannot do this right now. He's dead, I'm not able to do it. He's almost dead. It, serve, it serves him well to go, because he's going to Jericho. Why did he depart from Jerusalem and go to Jericho? But God loves him. Even the person that has been driven away, even more that person. That is why he brought the priest, but the priest saw, but he did not understand the word of the Lord. Who is blind but my servant, deaf but my messenger, and he departed. But God loves he, that person and says by chance, and this is the, the most important thing, by chance, this is the word of the Lord. God is doing it. God is stirring up the priest and the Levite to pass by that path, even though that he may has that person may go to Jericho and has essentially departed from Jerusalem, but the Levite as well saw him. Probably he thought the same things that the priest thought about and passed by the other side. And God, I may say uh, foolishly, I may say, desperate, he found someone who can do his work and he found who a samaritan who had compassion he does not know about the law he's not a priest he's not a levite he's not a lawyer but he has compassion what god wants us to have love he has blessed be the name of the lord he knows how to love and that love makes him to see and understand and he sees someone who's half dead, a person, but he's an Israelite, he's not a Samaritan, but he loves him because God has filled up with compassion for that person. These are the people that God needs. He does not need Levites or lawyers or priests or scribes or Pharisees. He needs people with compassion. People that their hearts are stirred, are stirred up, stirring up when they see someone in pain. People that are looking like God. And his heart was uh, shattered when he saw that person. In that very example. And David's heart did the same in the examples we read before in the Old Testament. And now, in our example, he started to attend him. He started off by washing, pouring on oil and wine in his wounds. And he bound him up. And he said to him, it's not easy to uh, drag or lift up a person who is unconscious. He probably, uh, it took probably great effort he was a person, he wasn't a child. He set him up and put him on his own animal. Not only did he not ab abandon him, but he took him with him. And these are the compassion that God is telling us to have. And he took him where he needed to go, an inn. There wasn't anywhere else to get him to. He needed to be taken care of, somewhere to be attended. It's almost night, and all night he's uh, with that person taking care of him. And when he woke up, and the innkeeper came, says, said to him, that, that person, take care of him and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. And he gave him also to... Um, Deanery, if you spend more than this, I'm going to give them to you. I'm going to give everything that you actually spend. And now 
re reaching back to the lawyer, God has prepared his heart. He was able, the one that drove near to God, to Christ, to test him, to ridicule him, to humble him. Christ was able, through love, to humble that person. And now he says, Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who became, proved to be, not who was? And that lawyer was now humbled. God, Christ was able to win him over. And he said, The one who showed him mercy. This is the secret for us to do and show mercy to the person that needs it. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise, and you shall inherit eternal life. No obstruction. He became a sheep. He used to be a dog or a wolf when he drew, drew near to God, firstly. But when he left, he was a sheep. He was humbled, humiliated by God, humbled rather by God, not by the knowledge of God, of Christ, but by the love of Christ, by the patience of Christ. Would I, I'm thinking about myself, would I be patient to speak to him and say this parable to him and reveal and give him to understand? I'm not sure. I'm talking about the lawyer now. Would I have the love to stop by the one who was injured? But even more difficult it is for me to, with patience, to train the lawyer than to take care of the one who was injured. Why was it easy? For, would it be more hard? Because the one who's injured can move my compassion. But the lawyer now should not uh, aggravate me. He's trying to humiliate me hum and humble me. And that's logical, a logical reaction of the heart. But with understanding of the word of the Lord, for me to understand and see and for the lawyer to also move my heart and compassions. And he was able to win him over. And we now need to win over the people that won't. Because David tried, but Saul did not accept. Saul did not try at all to win over David. Because he was totally a different person. Both of them, they were anointed by God. And now we are moving forward to a different scheme and scheme that has the same mentality. There was Martha and Mary, two sisters. And Martha invited over Jesus. So that he they may dine together all together. And see started with great effort to serve but Martha says the Bible in verse 40 was distracted with much serving he she was doing all she could but we said something that who is blind by my servant he is seeing but not understanding who is deaf but my messenger who is listening but he's not understanding In the corner of the house was Mary, sitting down by the feet of Christ, listening to his teaching. Martha was listening from afar, but was not understanding. She was seeing, but was not understanding. But she was the one that invited Jesus. She was the one that opened up her household. But she was seeing and not understanding. She was hearing and was not comprehending. Blind and deaf, a messenger a blind and deaf servant and she was distracted in much serving and she was not understanding listening or seeing and not just that her heart was also aggravated like souls lord she said to her do you not care that my sister has left me alone to serve to her therefore to this lazy woman i say that to help me out 
but that was in her heart. Am I going to do everything by myself? And that was the mistake. Same mistake as a lawyer. I know. He knows what? He's not knowledgeable. Math, I'm doing all things. So he's not doing anything. But God loves both of them, Martha and the lawyer, and wants to teach them both. Wants to make their eyes see. He needs to make their ears to listen. The lawyer, he was able to do it. Will he be able to do it to do so with Martha? I'm not seeing that in the Bible. Maybe he was able to do it. Maybe. And that was uh, confirmed by the death of Lazarus, probably. But he never reached the level of Ma Mary that poured out the, uh, the, the mar in the feet of Christ. You see that there are levels of servants. There's a difference between Martha and Mary. Both of them love Christ. But how much do they? And how are they loving Him? And what is the thing that made Mary to have such love? It's the love from the Word of the Lord. The love from the Word of the Lord. And God says, that is why you need to study those. Study the lawyer. Martha, Mary, study those and remain on those not just study but do the same the thing what Christ done has done become my imitators as I am of Christ do what what Christ has done to the lawyer and reply in the same way that Christ replied to Martha study those and remain to those and then your edification will be clear to all peoples don't you care O oh Lord I'm doing everything by myself. Mary's doing nothing. She's just sitting around listening to you. But that's what Christ is wanting. Martha, Martha is replying in verse 41. You are anxious. That's, that's a nice word that Christ is using. You are troubled about many things and anxious. You are anxious and troubled about many things, says the Lord. You are anxious and troubled because of the much serving, because Mary is not helping you, because I'm not saying anything to her. He, you are anxious about many things and troubled about them. And you are now down, going downhill. You are serving, serving, but you are... N that's useless, actually. May God protect us. And now let me explain to you something, Martha. You only need one thing in your life. And I repeat, when we hear the word of the Lord, the Lord is doing it, whether we understand it or not, so that we may experience it. And we are brought to the moment as if we are experiencing and living that very moment. That is the miracle of God. That is why the word of the Lord is alive and is more sharp than any knife and is coming through the mind, soul and spirit and is separating the, th the want of the soul from the thinking of the mind. The word of the Lord is alive. We are experiencing the word of the Lord. We are living through it. Martha, Martha. You are anxious and troubled about by many things. But you need to understand that one thing is necessary. And that thing that you need is the word of the Lord. Is the teaching of the Lord. Is for you to listen and understand. Not for you to listen from afar and not understand what the word of the Lord says or does. But how... 
am I going to be able to understand and listen to the word of the Lord? The answer is by studying it. Only when I'm remaining and studying the word of the Lord, only then, only when I am with attention remaining and studying the word of the Lord, not just r uh, read through, only then, the perfect law of freedom that is the word of the Lord that is alive and active will be able to transform me to a vessel of choice to action to someone who's ta who takes action and not just taking action on a word the word of the Lord actually says that I'm taking action on the work that God has prepared for me, or Christ has, Christ has prepared a work for Mary and Martha. And now Martha's heart is stirred up, and I want to be aligned with that. I want to be like Mary. I want, do not want to be like Martha. I want to be active. That is how I want to react as Christ, not as the lawyer. There's one thing that is necessary Mary has chosen the good portion to listen humbly in the feet of Christ to pay attention to the word of the Lord so that she may be able to act upon it and this portion and this is for us even more than what uh, Mary was told about back then this good portion will not be taken away from her the fact that you have taken a sort of steadfast decision to study the word of the Lord with the ability and want to stay for you to remain to it God will indeed transform you because of that and you're going to become from you're going to be transformed from a forgetful hearer because there's a difference between for the priest that saw and departed and that was a forgetful hearer here, a Levite as well. And there's a difference between to the one who's act, acting upon it. That was a Samaritan that saw and remained. And Mary that is hearing and remaining in the word of the Lord. That person has chosen the good portion. The lawyer heard this. And he was humbled and said, I mean. Or even better, he didn't say anything. Martha heard this. But the word of the Lord is not telling us what happened next. Maybe he, she didn't say anything as well. But I repeat, never was Martha in the same level, the sp same spiritual level as Mary. Was Mary more sharp? The answer is no, but rather she is more diligent in the word of the Lord. Wasn't Martha good? Martha was good indeed. But there's a difference between the level of Mary, the spiritual level of Mary, that is someone that is admired by our women, and there's a difference between the level of Martha that is not a, a someone to look after. God, my dear brethren, may He help us to remain and stay in this word that is the word the absolute law of freedom so that we may be transformed to vessels of his choice to servants without a blemish that are speaking about the truth of the Lord as we are going to be doers of the word and the work that God is want, is actifying in our lives whatever God is doing you do whatever God is saying you need to pay attention to and if I want to put it perfectly, whatever you see in Christ, pay attention to it. What you hear from Christ, pay attention to it. I mean, and comprehend it.